Insanity, I am the beast that he's cancel me. Granted, he is handsome, handsome with the bread, but underneath, way under feet, I cannot see the soul. Up in the grease, like the holes in the ozone, up in the heat, like holes in the snow globe. You reach a beast, get pro, check the logo. Hey, H, kill haters, call the docs, patience when I'm stuck in pray surveillance. Watch my patience, take your plate right off the table. Tell them, wait here, waiters waiting in my water. Fishy rappers hit the cadence, is it tip? When I drop down, you know it's time for prayers. Think I need a moment, man, I'm zoned out. Whoever sees this and subscribes right now will get a free piece of history, date not included. What's going on? On YouTube is Knox Hill and we're back with our reaction series so today today man today is an epic day appropriately named because it's Friday and you know we are back with epic rap battles of history so you guys know I read the comments the good the bad the ugly the troll and the next highest one that has been voted you got two guys that you want to see me do. I'm talking about Guy Fox and Shay Wavada. But before we go any further, guys, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to the song in the intro. If you like that, yes, I'm a rapper. There's a good chance you like my breakdowns. The way that I think about music, you'll probably like my music as well. I like my wordplay. I like music with a substance. I like to make you feel emotionally. I put a lot of heart, a lot of soul into my latest album, Chaos Theory, 20 tracks. So if you wanna support me and support this channel directly, I'll put that link below. Also, shout out to the Patreon and the Patreon fam. Exclusive content on there, guys. Exclusive reactions. If you wanna support me further, I will put that link below too. But anyways, anyways, we know what we're here for. Shay, Guy, step up to the plate. Let's see what you got. Ooh. I like the bounce to this one. Hold up, real quick before we jump in. I love how Guy Fox is wearing the uh, the anonymous mask, and I call it the anonymous mask, but originally it was the Guy Fox mask, the symbol of that in Revolution, as portrayed via the movie V for Vendetta. All right, let's roll. Man, I love the bounce of that beat. Is that bells or is that a xylophone? Somebody's gonna have to let me know in the comment section. Give out of the terror, fresh kangaroo, ill rhyme slayer from the 60s era. Ooh, listen to that drum track, yo. That drum track is like a Spanish reggaeton track. I love how they introduced that, obviously, for Shay Guevara, you know, being a native Spanish speaker. All right, let's break down the lyrics, man. I'm getting, I'm going off on tangents. Come on, Knox, focus today. Give out of the terror, fresh kangaroo, ill rhyme slayer from the 60s era. Fresh Kangol wearer, because obviously the most prominent image that anyone has that they equate Shea Guevara to is when he's rocking his hat that he always wears, sort of his revolution hat, which looks kind of like a Kangol hat. So I love how he's kind of taking that and sort of owning that diss against him so it can't be used against him later on by um, Guy Fox. Ill Rhyme Slayer from the 60s era obviously came up in the 60s. Those of you who don't know Shea and his story, um, basically he was Argentinian. Right, a lot of people think he was Cuban for whatever reason. He was Argentinian. Uh, he wanted to study medicine, and then actually he went and took a year off and basically traveled around South America and saw all the poverty and everything. There's even a movie. I remember having to watch that movie in Spanish class. What was it? Like a motorcycle diaries or something like that. But it's basically based off of Shea traveling around South America, and this is where he starts to get his ideas um, and starts to follow Marxism more seriously and starts to believe in these communist ideals of uh, equality for all and equal sharing and distribution of wealth because he saw so much poverty and so much corruption within governments, including his own government. And then he ended up in Mexico and somehow he met up with Fidel Castro and Raul Castro in Mexico and then uh, the Cuban Revolution happened. And actually it was interesting, the Cuban Revolution, because the original rulers were supplanted by U.S.-backed rulers and then Fidel came in and basically took it from the U.S. back rulers and established communism. And Che Guevara was right there. He was kind of a badass. I mean, he was one of the people who was there at the first attack. He's one of the few survivors from that initial launch and that initial attack. So, I mean, he's got the military history. He's got the mind as well. Hence why he's just uh, so iconic to a lot of people. But there's a lot of negatives to him as well. We'll get into it. Give out of the terror, fresh kangaroo. I'm Slayer from the 60s era, revolting heavy. That's that face. That's that face right there. I love how they take his face. It's on on the posters, on shirts, on so many things, and they just portray it. That's cool. Little rebel blood spiller. Me and my gorillas are a squad of killers. Ooh, me and my gorillas are a squad of killers. And normally, people like me and my gorillas are talking about like some street shit, right? But in this case, that just swings even harder because he's not just on street shit. Like he legitimately has fought with gorillas. I mean, he went to the Congo and tried to incite the revolution there. 
You know, he ended up in Colombia with the gorillas there. So yeah, he literally is rolling with gorillas. I like this bounce. Revolting. Some people might find him in his style revolting, especially when he's a heavy metal blood spiller. Get it, the metal, the gun is spilling blood, but he's like heavy metal, kind of like a rock star with his fame and how known he is. I like that. I like those lines. And obviously the revolt, like starting a revolt, starting a revolution. Nice casual double right there. Ill Ram Slayer from the 60s era. Revolting, heavy metal rebel blood spiller. Me and my gorillas are a squad of killers. Mm. Uh, known worldwide from my steely eyed look. You're famous because of Alan Moore's third best book. <laughs> Alan Moore's third best book, and that is V for Vendetta that he's shouting out, which really uplifted Guy Fox. But honestly, I mean, Guy Fox may be worldwide, but in terms of England, uh, England celebrates Bonfire Night every single year. And basically, I equivalent that to. Uh, our 4th of July. It's just an excuse to blow shit up, to light fires and to have fireworks, which are always fun and satisfying. Um, so yeah, bonfire night is a big thing with the uh, toffee apples in England. And then you have the effigy of Guy Fox that they burn. And yeah, it's just, just an excuse to just light a bunch of fireworks and have fun and get drunk. Own worldwide from my steely eyed look. You're famous because of Alan Moore's third best book. All the children say we won't be like Jay. Asthmatic. But I'll take your breath away. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, he's getting a little bit of that Latin lover in there, but I'll take your breath away. You know, he was known to be muy romantico. He, he was very much romantic, but at the same time, he also had asthma. Oh my God, he did have asthma too. He had asthma, but he was very athletic as a child, so he fought through that. All the children That's say clever. we'll be like Shay. As All the children say we'll be like Shay. And yeah, he still looked up to. I mean, he's still idolized uh, in a lot of cultures, especially in Cuba. But I'll take your breath away. <laughs> Try to rebel against James the first. Here's a tip for your next And obviously take your breath away, like literally he's killing you, taking your breath away. Sometimes I feel like if I don't explain the obvious ones, like I'll, I'll look at the double entendre or the triple and I'll explain the more difficult ones. And if I don't explain the obvious ones, someone in the comment section is like, aha, I got you, I got you. No, you fucking did it. Stop it. But I'll take your breath away. You tried to rebel against James the first. Here's a tip for your next plot. Try to rehearse. I got my face on a magnet on your roommate's fridge. Your head is on a spike up on London Bridge. Woo! Woo! I'm gonna need some AC in here. It's getting hot right now. And all right, Guy Fawkes' story basically is yes, he did rebel against James the first. And the thing that's very uh, interesting to me always is. Guy Fawkes is seen as the leader of the gunpowder plot when it actually wasn't him who was the leader. He was just dragged into it. And he was dragged into it because of his military experience, because he had fought uh, in the Dutch wars, trying to uh, control the rebellion there. So he just had that experience. So that's why he was given the gunpowder and the plans with the ammunition. And it wasn't his fault or anything he did wrong why he was caught. He ended up being caught because one of the members of the gun plot went to confessional stupidly confessed this and the uh the church member felt like it should be reported because he was worried that parliament was going to get blown up and there were some catholics in parliament i didn't even talk about the catholics and the protestants but obviously there's always been issues hasn't there uh throughout history between catholicism and the protestants especially in england we've seen it in ireland as well but basically um guy fox and those members of the gunpowder plot were all catholics and they were being not necessarily persecuted where they were killed, but they were being persecuted from practicing their religion. Like they, they would have to pay um, a tax on it. They couldn't practice their religion. Jesuit priests weren't allowed into England at the time. James I was very much just wiping out Catholicism and establishing the Church of England. And they felt like they were being oppressed and they had to do something about it. We as Americans, you know, we love to take sort of complex subjects and I've seen people just, you know, concise it and just summarize it down to the point. Oh yeah, Shay, we, I... Guy Fox was just pissed off uh, that James I wasn't a Catholic. That's why he tried to blow him up. No, there's a lot more story to it. Uh, there's a lot more complexity of the issues and of religion at the time and what went into it. Anyways, let's keep going. Let's keep going. And um, fuck, this is going to bother me. Who was the actual leader of the of the plot? Hang on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look this up. I'm, I, I want to get it right for you guys. Hold up. That's right. It was Robert Catesby. Robert Catesby. It's so funny that his name is not known because he was really the originator. He was the driver behind it all. He's the one that organized everyone. He had the wealth. He had the power. He had the aristocratic standing at the time to try to carry this out. And he's the one 
who brought Guy Fox on board with it all. Battle against James the First. Here's a tip for your next plot. Try to rehearse. I got my face on a magnet on your roommate's fridge. Your head is on a spike up on London Bridge. And obviously those who committed treachery and who were traitors against the state, they get their head on spikes up on London Bridge. Yeah, I like how he put that. He's like, hey, I'm on a magnet. I'm that famous and popular. I'm with your roommate. Because, yeah, so many. I mean, even I remember at my university, man, in college dorm, uh, one of my good friends had a huge Che Guevara flag. Um, he was super proud of Che Guevara, and he was really into Marxism. And we had some very interesting conversations at the time, that's for sure. I got my face on a magnet on your roommate's fridge. Your head is on a spike up on London Bridge. You had one job, cabron, to strike a matchstick. Got caught with the fuse like your bar. Not lit. You should have stayed. Like your bar is not lit. Because, yeah, I mean, he, he was the one who ultimately got caught with it all. You had one job, cabron. Cabron, like, ass clown, motherfucker, cabron. Come on now, dipshit. Not a miss, epic fail, guy. Treat this battle. Hang on. Hot with the fuse like your boss. Not lit. You should have stayed anonymous, epic fail guy. Treat this. Is he doing the worm on the floor? Yeah, he is. And he just called him epic fail guy because, again, epic fail guy, which is named after Guy Fox, the guy in it. Nice casual double, but we all know the popular Epic Fail guy originated from the mass, which has become a part of Anonymous and that organization, and all started through the the great darker web known as 4chan. If you guys don't know what 4chan is, I I will not explain it to you. Consider yourselves uh, lucky and better off because of it. Got caught with the fuse like your boss. Not lit. You should have stayed anonymous, Epic Fail guy. Treat this battle like the gallows. Oh my god, you should have stayed anonymous, Epic Fail guy. Like, you should have stayed anonymous playing off of anonymous. That is a, that is such a clever bar right there. That's a double. You know, stay anonymous like unknown. That way he wouldn't be known in the history books for just failing, being that Epic Fail guy but also Anonymous, the hacker organization that bases their mass from Guy Fawkes and Epic Fail Guy. That's fucking oh, not lit. You should have stayed Anonymous, Epic Fail Guy. Treat this battle like the gallows. Take another dive. As a communist, That's good. Treat this battle like the gallows and take another dive because he was meant to be uh, hanged and quartered and uh, what, whatever it was at the time, but it was, it was pretty gruesome because basically they would hang you and right before you were about to die, they'd cut you down. And then they would just slice your ass open, take your intestines out, all your stuff, and then they would chop your head off. Yeah, very, uh, very interesting way to go. So guy was like, "Well, fuck this. I'm a, uh, I'm gonna go out a different way." And he just leapt off of the sand, and yeah, basically, kind of committed suicide in a way. But he's already gonna die. So how do you classify that one? Anyways, we pause a lot on this channel. If if you're new here, sorry, I'm not sorry. Epic fail, guy. Treat this battle like the gallows. Take another dive. As a communist, it must really hurt That your face has been cheapened, weakened, besmirched Being plastered on posters, coasters, and shirts Making capitalists rich, all of you on merch Right, I'm a pious man <laughs> I really like some of Shay's bars, man And sort of his swagger But that is the most clever of all the bars so far What a, wow What a great way to flip all that You know, you're such a proud communist And look how you're being glorified today All the capitalists are literally capitalizing off of your name, making money and all the coasters, all the shirts, everything that's being put out, all the merch sales. That's, wow, what a great flip. Posters, coasters, and shirts. That's making good. Capitalist rich off of you on merch. Right, I'm a pious man and a fight for the Lord. I would cut you, but I don't want your sweat on my sword. I was tortured. Sweat on my sword. <laughs> I like how he enunciates sword instead of just saying sword. <laughs> I don't know why. That's making me giggle right now. Is that nice, Peter? It's gotta be nice, Peter. Obviously, we talked about him being a Catholic. He thought he was doing it for the right reasons, for religious reasons, to protect Catholics and Jesuits. Uh, he had ties with Spain at the time. What the hell was his name? Guy had another name down in uh, down in Spain. And they actually tried to convince the Spanish to come invade England and overthrow James I at the time because Spain was heavy with Catholicism. I can talk, I swear. Right, I'm a pious man and I fight for the Lord. I would cut you, but I don't want your sweat on my floor. I was told. And didn't. This might be a fucking stretch, but there's so many lines packed into this and so much research done. I'm just going to give an educated guess. Sweat on my sword. Instead of saying like blood on my sword, maybe Che Guevara was known for sweating a lot. Gotta be. I'm a pious man and I fight for the Lord. But I don't want your sweat on my floor. I was tortured until I could hardly sign my name. And Facts. listening to you felt pretty much the same. Oh, face it, turn it. Listening to you felt the same. It was torture listening to you rap. That's nice. That's a nice bar. I could hardly sign my name. And listening to you. 
look at him dancing in the background with uh you know a barrel of gunpowder while there's fire just flaming behind him i love the irony of that he looks so happy as well i like to blow things up too they're pretty much the same Ooh, face it, Ernesto You're Castro Alesso He's Cuba Commander You're more of the Destro Revolt all G.I. Joe bars? What, what, where are we coming with G.I. Joe bars right now? You're more of Destro Destro Second in Command Cobra Command Cobra Commander But he plays off of that by saying Cuba Commander His name His actual name was not Che He adopted that His first name was in fact Ernesto That's, that's super clever and then face it, Ernesto, because it's face all over posters. You're Castro, but less so. Playing off of Fidel Castro. Because Castro is the one that still has more fame and more renown for being the ruler and, you know, the, the leader of Cuba before he passed away. Cuba commander, you're more of the Destro. Revolt all you want. I don't give two guys fuck. But look at Venezuela. What? Hold up. Commander, you're more of the Destro. Revolt all you want. I don't give two guys fuck. That's fucking good. I don't give two guy fucks. I don't give two fucks playing off his name. Like, I don't give a fuck. But at the same time, giving two flying fucks to Guy Fox, that's good. And what I think is even better is because Guy Fox being British, right? This means basically this in British, right? So he's he's flicking them off, which is super clever. And he's showing that he's got two. That's, that's good. That's good. Yes. I don't give two guys fucks. But look at Venezuela. What you're fighting for sucks. Sucks. Ooh. Ooh. Why do we have to bring Venezuela into this? Yes, Venezuela is just torn ever since, uh, you know, Hugo Chavez passed away and very war torn. And yeah, not not great. He's saying, look at, look at the communist experiment. It's not exactly going very well. Except I would counter that right now with a superpower that continues to increase and something we should definitely be aware of and... That's China, people. Anyways. I don't give two guys fucks. But look at Venezuela. What you're fighting for sucks. Sucks. God. And yes, I know because I just realized, wow, sometimes I just light a fuse and I know it'll blow up in the comment section. Yes, uh, China is run by more than just communism. It's it's a ruthless, uh, you know, party that controls everything and is essentially an oligarchy of, of just ruthless control. Yes, I get it. I get it. Okay. What? I don't give two guys fucks. But look at Venezuela. What you're fighting for sucks. Sucks, guy. You died for the Catholics. A group with a bad touching little boys happened. And this porn star pilgrim look. Ah, <sighs> it was there. It was there. It was there, wasn't it? I knew. I knew he was gonna have to do it. He was gonna have to do it. Low blow, literally pulling out the Catholic priests and the issues with the touching of the little boys. Yeah, we went there. You died for the Catholics. A group with a bad touching little boys happened. And this porn star pilgrim look. What's up with that? It's more like me, but very bad at. Oh. What it's more like V for very bad hat. V, V for vendetta, but he takes that. He takes that V. That's clever. I like that one. And and what is the uh, porn star pilgrim look? That is a hell of a way to describe his outfit. And that, yeah, that's definitely a porn star mustache right there. That that mustache is getting some action. Pilgrim look. What's up with that? It's more like V for very bad hat. Oh, what's the fuck say now? I love that, that beat when it comes in. Oh, like four to the floor, man. It is that reggaeton, sort of that merengue type of bouncing vibe, man. So Let good. Cut your junk out. I'm the hardest Marxist ever graced a bank no. You're an error prone terrorist, penny for the scapegoat. Don't try hardest Marxist. Hold up. Oh, what's the fox say now? <laughs> what's the fox say now? What did the fox say? <laughs> yeah, that's definitely played off of that. When they cut your junk oh, they did it, and the they did it too. Marxist ever graced a bank no. You're an error prone terrorist, penny for the scapegoat. Hardest Marxist. I love that little internal rhyming scheme. There's some good flows on this, man. It, it's more measured, so those punchlines really hit and swing. It's not like they're coming really fast in and out of the pocket, but there's some really good writing and technicals behind the rhymes, man. So he's the hardest Marxist to grace a banknote because he's on the Cuban peso, right? And then he's... What, what is it? The penny line? The hardest Marxist. Oh, yeah. They cut this junk out because, again, when he was... uh, so Well, no, that's that's not true. He was supposed to have his junk cut out and be cut open. But it never happened because he ended up hanging himself. That's false. That's false, CRB. Penny for the scapegoat, right? Like a penny for your thoughts. There's something else to that penny line, but I can't I can't think of it right now. But uh, I like how he's like a banknote, like he's worth more in a penny, which is cents, worth a lot less. So penny for your thoughts, worth less compared to him being on a banknote and you're a penny for the scapegoat. What is it? There's something about, it's like a, a children saying, 
give a penny, take a penny. What the hell is it? Something like that anyways, where give a penny to get fireworks on fireworks night on bonfire night to celebrate uh, the epic failure of Guy Fawkes. And essentially he was a scapegoat. And like we talked about earlier, it was Robert Catesby. Yes, I remember that name this time. It was Robert Catesby that essentially led it all. But we all think that Guy Fawkes was the mastermind behind it, which he wasn't. Marxist never graced a banknote. You're an error prone terrorist. Penny for the scapegoats. Don't try to boast about your banknotes with Guido. You muddled your economy like mint in a marito. It's very... Banknotes with Guido? I'm the hardest Marxist ever. That's it. That was his name. His Spanish name was Guido. Okay, that was it. I was wondering. Prone terrorist. Penny for the scapegoats. Don't try to boast about your banknotes with Guido. You muddled your economy like mint in a marito. This very battle disproves your communist initiative. These rhyme skills are not evenly distributed. Oh, okay. That's good. These rhyme skills are not evenly distributed. Communism evenly distributing things. I love how he's taking some of these, uh, you know, more complex concepts and thoughts behind, you know, sort of the, the theology of communism. And he's using that, like the capitalist line, and then this line to flip it back on him. That That is another level of dissing, man. That's fucking clever. This proves your communist initiative. These rhyme skills are not evenly distributed. Oh, Catholic, I've got... Hang on, there was something else I missed, wasn't there? This Marxist ever graced up Guido. You muddled your economy like mint in a marito. You muddled your economy, yeah, because the Cuban economy, well, I mean, it, no matter what they would have done, it would have failed because the USA embargo, and they relied heavily on the states, and then they obviously turned their back on the states, which ultimately was not good for their economy, but Shea was in charge of, of the economy and setting up policies for that, and we saw how well that went for them. So I do like that diss there. That's good. And especially playing off of the fact that he's swaggering about the banknote and being on the banknote. And then he goes, right, I'm going to take that line. I'm going to flip it back on you. Nice battle. This very battle disproves your communist initiative. These rhyme skills are not evenly distributed. Oh, Catholic, I've got mass when I'm rapping. You're an old chain. That's by a pig's Latin. This is way too oh, clever. Catholic, I've got mass when I'm rapping. I got mass when I'm rapping. Like, you know, I've got an artillery. I got mass. I'm coming heavy with it. But also Catholic is in a Catholic mass, Catholic service. And then Shea was involved in the Bay of Pigs, which was the epically failed invasion, which was planned by Eisenhower. And the thing was, Eisenhower planned to take back Cuba with uh, the rulers who Castro overthrew, who were exiled in Miami. Um, and originally, the Bay of Pigs was supposed to have air support as well as sea support. And why it really epically failed and was considered just a foreign policy disaster for the states and really turned Cuba against us and then eventually led to the Cuban Missile Crisis. And yeah, everybody loves Kennedy, but you can blame Kennedy's ass for this one because he called back the airstrike. Like, if you're going to do something, don't half-ass it. Well, he half-assed it because the planners planned that it, you needed to have the air support in order for this to be successful. Lo and behold, it wasn't successful. Epic fail. Looked bad for the United States. Soviet Union took full advantage of that. So did Cuba. Oh, Catholic, I've got mass and then we're not even talking about the the face value clever ass line to that when he's doing pig Latin right there, and it's igpe. You're, an you're an umpche. So what you do in igpe is you take that first letter and then you put it with the a sound, right? Igpe, pig Latin. But here umpche. So if you take that c and put it before, he's calling him a chump. Taking the ch, you're you're a chump che. Clever, clever playing off of the bay of pigs, pig Latin. <sighs> wow. Wow, that is one of the best lines from ERB, honestly. Just in terms of depth and cleverness. That's up there with the uh, you know, the the U uranium lines and the isotope elements that we broke down in that uh Thanos versus Oppenheimer one. Hey, Definitely. I'm pig Latin. After what just happened, you should retire. Is it the fifth of November? Cause I'm on fire. That that is clever right there. That is beyond clever. I like this. Wow. The 5th of November is the day that is celebrated for Guy Fawkes. That is bonfire night in England. So I like how he just ends it on that. I'm on fire. I'm on fire with these rhymes. Wow. I mean, Shay was clever, man. Shay was good. Shay had some really good punches. But ultimately, Guy Fawkes, man. Guy Fawkes. Wow. One of, one of the best set of disses in terms of the doubles and the triples that i've seen on erb i mean that was that was next level writing right there and yes i know somebody's gonna say halfway through like the quality of my video went down i don't know what happened it was annoying the crap out of me too don't worry but i didn't want to stop it and pause it because this is erb and we paused it enough and we're not editing anything
But the ultimate winner in all of this has got to be Guy Fox. But what do you guys think? Comment below. Anyways, ERB, you were Knoxville certified. So if you guys liked today's video, if you did, be sure to smash that like button. Comment down below any other ERBs you want to see me do or if there's other artists you want to see me check out. I try to read all of your comments, guys. I respond as much as I can. So please keep commenting and keep posting. Also, if you're here at the end of this video, I saw a stat that over 40% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed to my channel. Please, if you're enjoying this content, which obviously you are because somehow you're still here listening to me just talk and ramble on. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button and notifications on. As always, this is your monitor. Stay safe, stay positive. It's Knoxville. I'll catch you in the next vid. I'm out.